a novel method of bilateral biliary decompression by endoscopic ultrasound-guided hepatical gastrostomy with bridging stenting using the partial stent and stent method for reintervention of multiple metal stent failure. We report a case where anterior and posterior drainage was performed using the partial stent and stent method via the transpapillary approach. The patient had a bismuth type 4 biliary obstruction, but only the right hepatic lobe was drained due to the obstruction of the left portal vein. For the recurrent stent dysfunction, the patient underwent placement of a plastic stent within an uncovered self-expanding metal stent to correct stent dysfunction. A 7 French plastic stent inside a metal stent. The patient later experienced stent failure and jaundice due to tumor progression and was admitted for plastic stent replacement. Neither imaging results nor symptoms suggested odinal stenosis. The transpapillary approach was attempted first but was unsuccessful. Dodenoscopy was challenging to perform because of dodenal stenosis. Fluoroscopy confirmed the dodenal stenosis. The plastic stent was extracted using an upper endoscope. Multiple uncovered metal stents, one stent in the anterior bile duct, and two stents in the posterior bile duct. Jaundice not resolved despite plastic stent removal. The patient refused to undergo percutaneous biliary drainage, so a decision was made to do an endoscopic ultrasound-guided hepatical gastrostomy instead. The left bile duct was observed in the stomach. The left bile duct was punctured using a 19 gauge FNA needle. A 0.025 inch hydrophilic guide wire was directed into the left bile duct. Enhancement of the bile duct showing malignant hydrobiliary obstruction, bismuth type 4. Insertion of the guide wire into the posterior bile duct. The stent mesh was then dilated using a balloon dilator. However, there was difficulty in inserting the catheter. Additional dilation was performed using a spiral dilator. This instrument is a tapered tip dilator that fits into a 0.025 inch guide wire and is expandable to 7 French. Insertion of a second guide wire with a larger caliber was done to straighten the bile duct and help stabilize stent insertion. A 0.035 inch hydrophilic guide wire was inserted into the posterior bile duct using a double lumen cannula. Insertion of a 0.025 inch hydrophilic guide wire into the anterior bile duct. The stent mesh was then dilated using a spiral dilator. A metal stent was placed through the anterior bile duct at a steep angle. Insertion and deployment of the first uncovered self-expanding metal stent 8 by 60 mm from the anterior bile duct into the left bile duct. Multiple metal stents were implanted into the hilar area and the new stent was placed using the partial stent and stent method to prevent overexpansion. Guide wire seeking the posterior bile duct from inside the deployed stent through the stent mesh. The stent mesh was then dilated using a balloon dilator. Insertion and deployment of an uncovered self-expanding metal stent 8 by 60 mm from the posterior bile duct to the left bile duct using the partial stent and stent method.
Enhancement of the bile duct, showing drainage from the right bile duct. The fistula of the hepatogastrostomy was only dilated using a spiral dilator. The risk of bile leakage was low, so we decided to implant a plastic stent. A 7 French 15 cm plastic stent was placed from the posterior bile duct into the stomach. Anterior and posterior segment drainage by U.S. hepatogastrostomy with bridging stenting using the partial stent and stent method. Left segment drainage by U.S. hepatogastrostomy with the plastic stent. We performed U.S. hepatogastrostomy on a patient with multiple metal stents in place. There were no adverse events and total bilirubin levels were reduced by more than half within two weeks. Six months have passed without stent dysfunction.